Hello there, students. Recursion is an often misunderstood part of computer science, and that's a real shame because recursion is perhaps our best tool for understanding how to represent computation over structured data. Now, I often see students who are um, used to the imperative style and are kind of frustrated by recursion when they first learn it. It seems unnatural and somehow less flexible or direct. Someone with a superficial understanding of functional programming might say that recursion is the functional programming equivalent of loops, which is true. In all functional programming languages, at least the pure subsets of them, you have to use recursion rather than iteration since there's no possibility to even accumulate with variables without doing something like a transformation that would essentially make it recursive in the first place. Intrinsic to understanding recursion is to really embrace the notion of structured data. Most functional programming languages, including Haskell and definitely Racket, are built on structured or linked data types that are at their core immutable. So for example, Racket's lists are linked cells of value. And this is fundamentally different than the kinds of representations that are used in array or object-like languages like C++ and um, C, for example. Those languages emphasize iteration because they're fundamentally doing mutable things under the hood. Now, what I hope to sell you on in this lecture is the idea that for these linked structures, for these algebraic data structures, things that look like lists, recursion is not just another way you can do it it's actually a better way to do programming. It's a more direct way to do programming. So really when you think about algebraic data structures, things that look like lists or trees or other things of that nature, anytime you have those kinds of data structures, you can very naturally and immediately derive recursion, uh, recursive solutions over them that follow kind of a cookie cutter technique. I can... I recently read a really nice blog article my, uh, named How Not to Teach Recursion by Sri Ram Krishnamurthy at Brown. Um, Sri Ram makes this really nice point in this article that so many of the traditional examples like factorial and Fibonacci that we use to teach recursion sort of belie the true nature because they don't exploit any of the real uh, implicit recursive structure that interesting algebraic data really has. And so to try to work around that uh, sort of limitation in teaching, I, uh, I'm going to have us do examples using these uh, Russian nesting dolls uh, to represent lists. So uh, the dolls may seem a little bit silly, but there are going to be two types of dolls. First, there are going to be uh, con cells, which are going to be these dolls that have nested structure to them. And con cells are going to have uh, sort of two things. They're going to have a car, which is a uh, number written on the outside of the doll. So 42 in this case. This list starts with 42. And they're going to have a, uh, a cutter. And so in this case, the, uh, the cutter is uh, negative 1. So the second element of the list is negative 1. Um, but then there's also, another, uh, there's also another list nested inside. And of course, also, the, uh, the other type of uh, the other type of thing that is a list is also the special uh, empty list. All right, and that uh, the empty list doesn't have any uh, data written on the outside of it. It's just a uh, sort of simple, unique things. All uh, all lists end with the empty list. So to be a, a valid sort of Russian nesting doll, you have to have this list at the uh, at the very bottom. All right, so we can represent the list that stands for the number seven, followed by the empty list, with this kind of configuration like, uh, like this, where I've got the doll, its car is seven, its cutter is uh, just this empty list here. Or I can represent the list of uh, one, followed by the list seven, followed by the empty list. Uh, or then I could combine out and get uh, three, one, and then seven. Uh, and then 317, I can get negative 1 on top of that. And I can reassemble the whole thing, and I can start the list again with, uh, with 42. All right, so we'll see how we can exploit this natural recursive structure inherent to the, uh, inherent to the doll and also inherent to uh, cons diagrams or con cells 
and the empty list in Racket. And we'll see throughout the course how we can generalize this structure to, to other things that aren't just lists as well. All right, so now let's look at how we can take uh, this list right here and represent it in Racket. All right, so we know that this list is a cons of 42 and some other list. So let's do that operation first. So I know that this is 42 and then some other cons cell behind it. So cons 42 and then what's the rest of the list? Well, we've got negative one. So we'll do cons negative one and then Got negative 1, 42. These things are not going to stay put. We've got 3. So cons 3. And then we've got uh, 1. And we've got 7. And we've got the empty list. Oh, we can't pull that one apart. Okay, so cons 3, cons 1, cons 7, and then empty list. All right, so let's ask ourselves, how can we write some calculations over this list? So one of the most basic things we might want to know is what is the length of the list? So I can just look at the length of the list on the table because it's all been pulled apart. But if you just give me this first con cell without telling me what the rest of the list is, I have to actually unwrap it and perform this computation looking at the rest of the cells until I get to the end. What I have to do is I have to start here and I have to say the length of the list is at least one because I see this first cell plus whatever this list is, right? So whatever the length of the rest of the list is. So the length of any list is one plus the length of its tail, right? And the length of this list is one plus the length of its tail. Now, a nicer way to kind of observe this, if you just kind of want to look at the structure of the code, there's a hint right here lying in, in the representation of this list as a set of con cells. If we start with this code right here, How can I get the length of the list? What I can do is I can replace every instance of cons by plus, and I can replace every number by one. Then I replace that empty list with zero. Okay, so let's see, what do we have to do to calculate the length of the list? So someone hands me a list and says, calculate its length. So I have a con cell. I could also have the empty list. What if someone handed me the empty list? What would I tell them? Well, I would tell them that the answer was just zero because the length of the empty list is zero. All right, but I have a con cell. And so I know that the length of the list, well, I, I don't really know what the length of the sub list is unless I actually open it up and inspect it. But I know that the length of the entire list is one plus the length of whatever this sub list is over here. All right, so I know that I'm still working on my problem, but I know that I've got one plus the length of this sub list. All right, so then now I have to figure out what's the length of the sub list. Well, I'm gonna do the same thing. It could be the empty list, but in this case, it's not. It's a, uh, it's a con cell with negative one on it, and then another list inside. So um, it's now it's one plus one plus, and then whatever the size of this list is right here. All right, so one plus one, and so we're gonna keep sort of laying it out. I can keep kind of doing this. And then eventually I get down and I sort of see, all right, well now I have the empty list. Its size is zero. So the problem is it's one plus one plus one plus one plus one. So it's length five. 
because this list is just sort of empty. There's no representation here. All right, so what does this look like in terms of the code? Well, let's see how easily we can transition this into Racket. So all I can do is I can just replace this cons right here. All these instances of cons, look what happens if I replace them by plus. Well, first, if I do that, and then I replace this empty list with just zero. Well, this isn't the length of the list, but it's the sum of the list, actually. So, so that's going to be the answer to our second problem. We'll see how to do it more directly and, and more generally in a second. But I could get back the sum of the list, or the length of the list, by just interspersing ones right here, changing these all to the number one. So there's going to be a really common structure to these problems. If I want to perform a computation over this list right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cook up a function that applies to sort of each con cell, and then also that applies to the base case. So if I want to manipulate this list, if I want to process this list structure, what I want to do is I want to process each of its con cells, but usually before I do that I want to process the rest of the list, and then I want to give that result back and then use that to then combine out and give a result for the entire list. So any function definable over lists or at least most functions. There are some functions that I'm going to have to use some other general kinds of tricks for. But the general heuristic for writing recursive functions is that I just take the natural con structure of the list right here, and I'm going to observe that I can replace cons by an arbitrary operator. And then I can sort of mutate the, the sort of structure of the list in whatever way I want. All right, so let's reiterate that and think more directly. How can I define the, the length of the list now? All right, so now let's define the length function. So calculate the length of a list L. So what is a list? We said a list is either the empty list, null, or it's a con cell of some car, which is some value, and some cutter, which is some other list. So, okay, the length of the empty list. So we say it's, it's a con cell or it's the empty list. So we know since it could be either, we're going to have to branch. And this is one of the most important things to remember, is that because list is a data, it's an algebraic data structure, it has two constructors. One of the constructors is the empty list. So we say if it's the empty list, if empty, huh, L, well then what is the length of the empty list? Well, it's just zero. All right, so the length of the empty list is just zero. Otherwise, it's a con cell with something in it now. So we're going to create this length one list, seven. Otherwise, it's one plus with the length of whatever uh, this list is right here. All right, so this that's going to be one plus the length of the cutter of L. All right, and see, this is the recursive call. This call to get the rest of the length right here, whatever it was, this would work. In this case, it's just going to be zero. But in general, it could be some arbitrarily linked structure. All right? So now I can run length. Let's bind this to a variable x. All right. All right, so let's look at how our length function actually processes lists in terms of these little uh, dolls here. All right, so I've got this uh, segment at the end of this list that's just the last two elements. So I've got cons 1, 7, 
There we go. Cons 1, 7. I've got that in my hands right here. And we want to see how length is going to process this. So let's look. When we call length, what happens? All right, well, let's just push the definition in right here. So we're going to say, is cons 1, 7 empty, huh? So it's going to say, is this the empty list? And it's going to say it's not. So this is going to be 1 plus So this is going to reduce to 1 plus through an intermediate call to if that I'm not sort of showing right here, but just being a little bit brief about it, 1 plus length of the cutter right here, which is this little list right here. So that's its sub list. Now, it doesn't necessarily inspect the entire sub list. It doesn't know what it is until it actually goes and processes it, right? So. So what is the length of this list right here? Well, we do the same thing. So we've got one sitting on the stack, by the way. So the computer is physically using a stack to represent this. So it's going to say it's one plus whatever this length is here. So doing this inner call, we're going to say, all right, well, is this list the empty list? And it's a con cell, it's not. So we are going to again go say one plus the length of Whatever, uh, whatever this list is right here. So we're going to do one plus the length of the empty list. And now when I put this one into the function, I can see this just says if empty ha huh l, so this is true now, empty ha huh is true for this list l. So that's going to be zero. And we're going to see plus one, plus one, zero. And then that will reduce to one plus one, which reduces to two. All right, so that's the substitution model for, or the textual reduction model for how we can understand recursion. All right, so now let's define how we can calculate the sum of all the elements in the list. All right, so this is pretty similar. I have a con cell. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say it's the car of this con cell plus whatever the sum is of the rest of this list. So what's the sum of the rest of this list? Well, it's seven plus whatever the sum is of the rest of this list. All right, well, um, okay, well, this is just the empty list. So the sum is zero. And then we're going to say, so that's zero plus seven plus one, and that's gonna give us eight. All right, so let's see how we can actually implement that in the code. So we're going to say define sum of L. So we're going to say, um, well, if it's the empty list, the sum is zero. So if empty, huh, L, then the list is, list's sum is just zero. Otherwise, what is it? Well, let's say it's something like a, uh, let's say it's something like this list right here. Well, that is uh, seven plus, so the car of L plus the length of whatever its cutter is, right? So it doesn't, in this case, it's the empty list, but it could be anything, right? So if I were to in general have something like if I had have this console right here, it would be one plus the sum of seven and then the empty list. So I can code that up by saying car of L plus the sum of the cutter of L. All right, and if I think about how that textually reduces, Let's say I have sum of cons one, seven. Well, that's the same thing as plus one, and the same here because the list starts with one, sum cons seven. So that's gonna be then expand out to plus sum, oops, nope, plus seven 
and then sum of the empty list. All right, so then we're going to say the sum of the empty list is zero. Zero. And this is going to reduce to plus one, seven, reduces to eight. All right, so there is a formula emerging. And the formula is that whenever you want to process, whenever you want to define some function that works over all lists L, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I need to handle the circumstance in which that list is zero. And I also need to handle the circumstance in which that list is a con cell composed of some data plus some other list behind me. All right, so I'm going to have a general strategy for processing lists. So what does that template look like in code? So if I wanted to find some function f over a list l, my general template is going to say if empty l handle the base case. Otherwise, handle the recursive case. So we're going to say let the head of the list be car. Let the tail of the list be cutter. And we can write some, we don't have to do this, but we can just write some code that uses process TL and then combine with HD. So that's going to be our general template for writing a function over lists. We're going to choose what to do to process the empty list, and then we're going to tell what to do to combine our results up. All right, so let's try this out for another function. Let's try this out for a function that reassembles the list, but selects only the positive numbers from the list. So only the numbers that are greater than zero, let's say. So let's try to define that function using this template. So we're going to say only positives. So we're going to say if the list L is empty, well then what do we do? How do we return a list of positive numbers if the list is empty? Well, we need to return a list because our input is a list and we're trying to return a subset of that. But you can't really take a subset of the empty list, so we're really just going to return back the empty list. All right, so for the base case here, we're going to say this is just the empty list. Otherwise, we're going to use car and cutter. We could use them, uh, we could define them using let. That's a sort of a nice cookbook way to do it, but you could just call them yourselves manually if you want as well. So we're going to say, otherwise, it's a con cell. And what are we going to do? Well, we're going to say, OK, well, this is 42. Well, if 42 is greater than 0, include that and put that onto the front of the rest of the result. All right, so um, we're going to say, that because 42 is positive, we're going to include it. Now, the next one is, uh, is negative 1. So we're not going to include that one. All right, so we're going to drop this one off. We're going to sort of say like, all right, take this one, just kind of forget about it. We're not going to, we're not going to let this doll uh, join the, uh, the end list. All right, and then we've got three right here. So we're going to say, all right, well, three is going to be in our result. We're going to remember to concatenate that to our results. And we've got one right here. All right, and we've got... Uh, We've got seven, and then we've got the empty list. All right, and uh, the way this is going to work out is that because we've defined this to be the empty list, we can use our smaller uh, and smaller results, the results from calls to the smaller and smaller lists, we can just cons those on, and that's going to work out to give us the result we want. All right, so we're going to say if 
the car, so if the car here is negative, so if it's uh, less than or equal to, if the car is less than or equal to zero, then we're going to exclude it. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're just going to return only positives on the remainder of the list. All right, so we're just going to call only positives on the remainder of the list, and we're going to kind of forget about this first cell. We're dropping it on the ground. All right, so we come back up from returning, from processing the rest. We're going to get some con cells here in the cases when these are positive numbers, but when we get these cases where we've got negative numbers, we're just going to pass the results here along back up to the result of 42 to assemble that. All right, so we're going to exclude that. We're going to say only positives for the cutter of L. So if it's uh, if it's a neg if it's a uh... oh I'm sorry. No, I think that's right. If it's less than or equal to zero. All right. So we're going to exclude that one. Otherwise, include it. Now, how are we going to include it? Well, we're going to use cons. So we're going to say cons the car of L onto only positives of the cutter of L. So that's going to say process the rest of the list. So when I got 42, take 42, we're going to cons that on to whatever the result of this gives me. Now, when I start to process this, I sort of say, okay, well, this is starts with negative one, so forget about that one. Don't, don't include negative one in the end result. Give the result of this. So we've still got a cons over here, where you've got cons 42 is going to happen after we process the rest of the list right here. Then we keep going down. These are all positives. I guess there's, a, there's no zero in here, is there? No. These are all positives. So we're going to go up, and we're going to get this positive list right here. All right, and then I do only positives. I've called my list x. And I can see I get 42, 3, 1, 7, and then the empty list. All right, so that's our sort of textbook procedure for writing recursive functions.